Hello everyone, Michael Jacobs. I'd like to welcome you to the Explosive Golf Show. This is a follow-up to our first show of the season. First show did such a nice job of explaining some new concepts and new ways of looking at uh, an effective downswing, an effective contact with the ball. It generated all kinds of questions, generated some nice emails, also some hate email. Always love the hate email. Thanks everyone. But um, what I want to do for you now is there was a whole list of questions. You can always join us on my web forum, xgolfschool.com, and you can interact with me. But th there was a lot of questions, and instead of sitting there and typing them out and going over the details, it's easy for me to run through them here, give you an explanation, give you some demonstrations, and then we can go on even with a third explanation if we need to. Uh, I'm just going to run through them. One of the biggest questions was, okay, uh, talk more about the squaring of the face, rotating of the forms. How is the face of the club going to line up? If, it's, if, you know, if you do what you're suggesting in that first explosive golf show. Well, I'm going to suggest you that's how you aid in squaring it up with a lot less stress on the body. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to switch to my little club for a second here. When that golf club is coming down, uh, when it starts early on in the downswing, uh, there's not much pounds of force in the actual club. When it comes down and it starts to gain a load, as it starts to move down, it starts to gain a, a stabilizing and uh, load, and, and the effective weight of the club increases dramatically. So as this club is coming down then, and it gets even below your hands, the golf club weighs a tremendous amount more than just the actual weight of the golf club. It can weigh up to 100 pounds effectively as you come down. So you're using your body pivot, you're using your arms, and you're moving almost 100 pounds as you're coming into that it, it, hitting area. Let's say it's an iron and the golfer's got to move about 80 pounds into the impact. So if you think about it for a second, if I'm coming in and squaring 80 pounds, it's going to be hard for me to try to line my hand up with the sweet spot and do just a pure screwdriver action as I come in. See, I'm able to do it here. If, I switch, if you grab a, a regular club and put your hand out in front of you and move your hand away from you, as you uh, bring the club into impact. So you're up on the tabletop. I want you to feel like you're up on the tabletop. You're off the ground now. Well, you could do it on the ground if you really wanted to. But hold it up for a second, because it'll be heavier. It'll give you a sense of effective heaviness more up here than it would on the ground. Because I'm suggesting you the club's a lot heavier effectively when you're swinging. And what I want you to do is I want you to move your hand down and away from you as you try to square the face. And to do that, you're gonna need, you're gonna feel like you're gonna need a screwdriver type twist or, or swivel into the contact as you move that hand down and away from you. You're going to feel an awful amount of stress in the form. It's actually going to hurt. It's actually going to be tight and hurt as you bring it down. And you can see the squaring of the face would be very difficult and almost impossible if the hands are moving away from you, especially if the club's weighing more than it effectively does. Now what I want you to do is I want you to put the club in your hand and I want you to square the face by having the sense that this club head is going to go out towards the ball, and then you're going to bring the handle into you a little more. So the handle is going to come, the handle of the club is going to come into you as the club head comes around, and you'll see a tremendous amount of squaring of the face and ease of lineup, almost to where there's no stress as this thing comes down in a, in a tabletop rehearsal setting. So you can see how then the golfer would use their body and recruit all their body to move that effectively 80 to 100 pound club and square it up to the contact. That's why it looks like the butt end of the club is coming closer to the golfer as he comes into contact. When you funnel through swings and you watch, you're going to see the, the butt of the club come closer to the golfer as they come into contact. I'm going to explain to you that phenomenon in a second, but you can see how that type of movement would square the face up tremendously. And that's why you can see a lot of young lady golfers or Laura Davies back in the day, to where they recruit their body in such a fashion they go up towards their toes, and that gets the weight of the club to come around even more, and they can gain a little extra speed. So there is a definite advantage to that handle, handle of the club, uh, I'll, I'll use this, but the, the handle of the club bottoming out, so the handle of the club is coming down, bottoming out, and then moving up and in as the club head comes around. If the if the handle continues down and out to some type of aiming point or something on the target line, and then you go to square, it's very difficult. Uh, you, you'll lose your body. You'll start to thrust. You'll start to do a pelvic thrust into the contact instead of being able to recruit the body 
to line it up. So squaring the face becomes a lot easier. As for the butt of the club, I just talked about how the handle of the club appears like it looks like it's coming into the golfer. I put a little reflective tape, a little uh, orange tape, on my grip to represent the concentration point on the grip. And what it is, is it's right where my two hands join each other, like right where they're coupled. And that's going to be a great spot to monitor. Because what you're going to notice is, when I'm coming in, might be a little hard to see here, but I will definitely demonstrate this going forward. This is going to probably be one of the most revolutionary concepts in the future of golf instruction. Just want you to know we cracked the code here. But anyway, as this thing is coming down, you're going to notice that this orange reflective tape is just going down in a little circle and then back and up around. And the butt of the club looks like it's coming into me as this little orange thing comes into the contact. So the butt of the club is doing a lot more travel and it's working in because it's separated from there. It's not like the golfer's tugging the club in as they go in. This little reflective orange part where the two hands join each other just come down on a nice little circle and line up. But the, the butt of the club looks like it comes in because it's so far further away from that concentration point. We're not concentrating on the butt. I'm not going to try to pull the butt of the club in me. I'm going to take where the two hands join each other and just bring those down into the contact and feel like they bottom out by the back leg and then they come in and line up, impact and beyond. And the butt of the club looks like it comes very close because it's separated from that concentration point. So just want you to understand that one. Then we also talked about the initial start down. It said, I, I said in the video that what great players are doing is the, the center of mass of the club is down right about there in the club. It's wherever you take the club and balance it on your finger like that. That's the center of mass of the club. And on the downswing, when the center of mass of that club gains speed, it starts to go and the club flees outward and then comes around. So the great player is delaying the outward release of that club until when they need it, you know, more towards the ball. So the concept I, I, I talked about is when you see all great players, you see them on the backswing and down into the downswing, you always see that their hands take a little bit of a closer path to them, and you always, it looks like the golf club is like going to hit them almost on the back, and it's going to split them in the back on the way down, and you can see how that club stays very close to the back arm before it flees out later. And, the, and what I was trying to drive home, and what you're going to find out in the future of golf instruction, and what I've found and what I've discovered is the process of achieving what you see the great players do is the opposite of what you think. Golfers swing back, and they see this club coming down into the golfer to let, and then they start to take their hand path, and they shorten their hand path as they start down, thinking that they need to take their hands wide to narrow to bring that club in. If you consciously and effectively do that and bring the club into you, you're actually going to speed the center of the club out more, and now you're going to be more in a casting location. The word casting is so prevalent in golf that it's unbelievable when I get some of these responses. But if I pull my hands towards the ball or I pull my hands into me, the, the center mass of the club flees out tremendously. So if I try to go from the top to some type of aiming point directly on the ground, the club is going to flee out. So I started to, you know, that's always been uh, a thing I've noticed in teaching. So I started to crack into it more and I started to, you know, see measurements and things of all different samplings of players and the forces and torques that appear on the club. And all players of quality timing, high-end golfers, all have a moment that's purely straight lined at the top, on the top of that transition from backswing to downswing. It's called the tangential force. It's a big word, I know. But it's all straight lined before that club comes around. So here's what that tells us. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. What it means is that even though the golfer's hand path, if you watch it from this view, goes down and you know comes narrow, looks slightly narrower than the way back, and because it looks like the club is splitting into the back. But the process of achieving that is to feel as though on the start down, you're moving 
the golf club that way on the start down. So the actual golf club is looking to go that way on the start down. So when it's going that way on the start down, I'm delaying the outward movement of the club. So the great player is reporting a force into the club, and this is universal, uh, is reporting a force into the club almost like they're throwing a spear or chucking a spear early on. So they're reporting a force early like that, that way, as far and as wide as possible, and then as they make a move with the, I'm sure you've seen kinematic sequence graphs where it's peak speed in the pelvis and there's pelvis sway and then there's you know all this type of movement and the left shoulder is moving this way. That's what brings the hand pass more on the setting that you're seeing. But the golfers are reporting a force on the club that is purely away, out and away and then it's going to be the body movements that pull that in and then that's how they better time the release of the club. That's why great players like Jack Nicholas felt like as soon as he goes back, he feels like he's trying to line the club up, but it's an effective body move in conjunction with the early forces on the club that make that thing into a well-timed downswing. So that's the point I was trying to make. If I didn't use my body and I just went back and made a backswing, it would look purely like that. Without a pivot, it would be like I'm purely chucking the club like that. But it's that movement coupled with my body movement that's going to give me the, the looks you see on TV. So the point I was trying to make home is everybody has made an error in the past. And I'll be the first to tell you, a couple of my older videos, I'm going to go back and adjust. We have upgraded the information. Uh, if you went and got your gallbladder removed, they're not going to do it the same way as they did 10 years ago. So when that club's coming down, if you think you need to pull the club into you to have some lag and drag, you're actually going to send it out more and create that casting backward leaning of the club that everybody is so worried about. Uh, if you put that early force into the club to feel purely like it's going that way, that club will be much more well-timed. So that was the story on the outward moving of the club. Why? Hand paths look wide to narrow, and really the early reports on what the great player is doing to the club is purely tangential here. So it's purely that way. It's off the circle. So if this club head is moving in a circle, the first movement is purely off the circle, and then the body pulls it on circle as it comes down. And then what you're just seeing is you're seeing a well-timed golfer. If you do that, you will actually get more lag and drag than you ever had in your life because you're actually delaying the outward movement of the club by having a force on the club this way as your body comes around. That's the explanation. That we'll obviously going to talk about this more and more because obviously this is going to revolutionize a lot of the way people discuss. Uh, the role of the pivot was asked by Drew Golf, and that's the role of the pivot. On a zero pivot stroke, would that exist? I, I'm assuming that we're talking about a zero pivot swing only being a putt. So a putt becomes a different problem. A putt becomes more of a single pendulum problem. So I, no, not, not on a putt. It wouldn't be like that. Question is, is this innate? Can this be worked on specifically? Can this be reverse engineered? Uh, you, you can, yeah, you can work on it specifically 100%. Uh, it's revolutionized the game of all my students, revolutionized my game, and you're going to see it. All my friends who are golf pros and everyone else that I've uh, delved this information over to, this is going to be coming out in full stream, and you're going to see a total different shift in, in the thinking on what a sound downswing is. You're going to see a shift off of the kinematic sequence being uh, such a, you know, training the body moves as opposed to the, kinema the kinematic moves of the body accommodating the outward move of the club and the hand path accommodating the outward move of the club into the impact. You're Michael Jacobs from the Explosive Golf Show. If there's any more questions on the subject, we'll do part three. Hope you enjoyed.